I will praise him for what he has done. May all who are oppressed listen and be glad. Proclaim the Lord's greatness with me. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered my prayers and freed me from all of my fears. Oh, taste the Lord and see that he is good. This is the word of the Lord. And again, the whole church said, Amen. Amen. We want to use briefly this morning, talk on the subject. I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. As we look at our neighbor, let's say it together. Come on. I will bless the Lord at all times. One more time. I will bless the Lord at all times. Now you have just made a vow before God and man. You've made a pledge that you're going to do what? Bless the Lord when? At all times. And it is always good to give thanks and praise to God. It's always good to bless the name of God, regardless of your circumstances, of your situations, or in your condition. Bless the Lord when? At all times. Times. I'm excited about the 34 Psalms. It's really a poem that they made children to recite and learn. But there is some great things in this psalm that, that really speaks to the heart of men today. Here in the 34 Psalms, David experiences the saving power of God. David is delivered and set free from some unknown anxiety, meaning that they didn't know what was going on with him, but something was going on with David. David was going through something. David was hiding from something. David was dodging something. David was wrestling with something. There was something tearing at David. There was something he was struggling with. There was something that, that, that David was running him crazy. There was something making him walk the floor. And there was something that was making David act in an unnormal way. There was an unknown anxiety. And David said, as I was going through this, he said, I pray to the Lord. And he answered my prayers. Now, that is an indication first that God's grace is sufficient for all of our needs. Amen. Amen. And when you're going through something, it's good to talk with somebody about it, isn't that right? And if you don't have nobody to talk to, you can always talk to the Lord. Isn't that right? The songwriter said, just a little talk with Jesus will do what? Will make things right. right. Children, you got to have somebody, you find somebody you can talk to. Right. Am I right about it? You got to be able to release something. Now, I don't say tell everybody in business. Amen, amen, because you'd be all on Facebook, amen. You know, I just can't get ready for folk. Let me just say this, amen. I'm kind of private anyway. But you know, you got some folk that are come to your house and at different functions, take pictures and everything. You know, they just think they're innocent and they're taking pictures. Next thing you know, it's on Facebook. Huh? I don't want to be on Facebook. Don't be taking no pictures of me putting on Facebook. I ain't asked you to do that, huh? Amen, I thought I'd put that in there. <laughs> And, and so here it was that David was going through something. But when he prayed, the Lord answered his prayer. Now, I'm going to say something about that later on in the sermon. But uh, it let us know that God's grace is efficient for all our need, especially when you're going through something. And everybody going through something. 
Everybody got something that's bothering them. Everybody's dodging something. Amen. Everybody's wrestling with something. You may not tell nobody what it is, but you've got something going on. Have I got a witness here? Amen. Amen. And I just want you to know and encourage you that God's grace is sufficient. That's, you know, Paul had something going on. Paul said, I had a thorn in my side. And he said, everywhere I turn around, that thing just sticks me and pricks me. Isn't that right? What did Paul say? He said, and I prayed to the Lord, what, three times? That's an indication, amen. Don't give up on God when you pray the first time and you don't hear nothing. Don't give up on God when you pray the second time and don't hear anything. Yes, every now and then you just got to keep coming back. Amen. You ain't bothering the Lord. Amen. Don't think you're bothering him. Amen. 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 God hears your prayer. And Paul said the third time I prayed, I heard a voice from heaven saying, My grace is sufficient for all you need. In other words, what the Lord was telling him, look at whatever you're going through, I can handle it. I'm going to make it all right for you. My grace is sufficient. Amen. I got some other things I can put on you to soothe it. Amen. But just my grace yeah. is sufficient for all of your needs. And so now, let's look. I will bless the Lord at all times. In the first verse here, I'm teaching this morning. David makes two promises just in verse number one. Number one, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And then number two, his praises shall what? Continually be in my mouth. Now let's take them one at a time. Amen. I will bless the Lord. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. To bless God means to acknowledge the preeminence and the authority of God. To acknowledge and to recognize that God has all power in heaven and earth in his hand. To bless the Lord is to declare that God is a good God, that he's a great God, that he can do anything but fail. To bless the Lord is to acknowledge and, and to, to, to give him credit for being a majestic God, an omnipotent God, an threatening God, a God of immutability, a God who's everywhere at the same time. You've got to give credit to God that he is in control. God is still running things, children. Amen. Don't think man is in control. He's doing a whole lot of stuff, but he ain't running nothing. Is that right? God is in control. Somebody say he sits high and he looks low. He sees and yes, he knows. And his eyes are on the sparrow. And I know he watches over me. So God is in control of what's going on in our world. He's going to put a stop to this stuff. That's going around, and then it's very good. Amen. He's gonna put it. Got a good amen right there. He's gonna put a stop to it. Amen. I'm still taking my shots though. Amen. And so <laughs> help me, Lord Jesus. I'm, I'm jumping up and down, just me and Mary over to the church. We jumping up and down happy couple. We got our boosters, amen. Uh, just this past week, amen. And uh, she said they didn't ask her no question, but they asked me some. Amen. They they say, uh well, we're not giving it to enough people, but people who compromise the immune system and people got cancer and all this here. And you know, you know my hearing, and you know I don't hear too well. Y'all do know that, don't you? And I don't see too well. And so uh, they marked something and made a check, a yellow check on two of the square boxes. And they say, do you have any of those? Well, you know, your pastor couldn't see. So I say, yeah, I got both of them. They say, go on over there and get you shot. <laughs> Help me, Lord Jesus. I couldn't see now. I ain't done nothing wrong. I, I just can't hear and I can't see too well. <laughs> Amen. So I got me a booster. <laughs> it's going to last me just a little while longer. Amen. And, and what I'm trying to say here is, is, is that, is that, is that, is that God will supply your needs. 
Amen? And David recognized this. David recognized it. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And so, in blessing the Lord at all times, it means summer, winter, spring, and, and fall. It means you will bless the Lord in the good times of your life. And in God do it. Doesn't he allow us to have some good days and some good years? Isn't that good? I'm talking about, see, when you're having a good day, a good year, I'm talking about, you know, honey is happy. The children are doing well in school. You got money in your pocket, amen. And you got a job, amen. You got a car to drive. You got somewhere to stay. It's good years, isn't that right? Those are good days. And it's easy to raise your hand and tell the Lord, thank you. It's easy to bless the Lord. Isn't that right? But what about the stormy days? Every day is not going to be a sunshiny day. And every now and then, I believe our faith is tested by the storms of life. Well, I believe in God and everything was going well. Don't you have that same faith when things ain't going well? In other words, the psalmist is questioning and he's asking, can you, you, you can praise God when it's going good for you and the ball is bouncing in your favor? But when things are going bad for you, can you still stand up and say, I thank God and I bless him for everything that comes my way? We have to bless God. Yeah. Even in bad times. When we're dealing with sickness and pain. When we're dealing with grief and sorrow. The loss of love. When we're, when we were dealing with children. When we're dealing with things that just seem to be going the wrong way. We still must bless the Lord. When? And all the time. When I think about blessing the Lord at all times, one person comes to mind. Now, there are many in the Bible. But old Job come to mind. How many know Job used to have things going on? Huh? Job, Job had money. Now, see, I like a man like that. Well, we got money. Not only does he have money, and then he, he, he got cattle on Thousand Hills. He got sheep. And see, back in the day, when you had money around, all the guys in the country that had money they wear the pants leg inside of one boot. And the other leg is out. That means he got real good money, okay? Y'all with me in here? And then if you see one of them that got both pants leg inside the boot, oh, he's a millionaire. Huh? He's a millionaire, is that right? And they had some walking around in Fairfield, Texas. Amen. Some of them had both bridges legs in the boot. Huh? That means they had it going on. Some had one bridge leg in the boot. Amen. Is that right? Now that didn't include me. I ain't had no boots. <laughs> Help me, Lord Jesus. But, 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 but. When you had Joe had going on and he was praising God. But then we know what happened. The devil made a pact with God. The devil said, look at him. The only reason he's sad is because you got a hedge around him. You protecting him and you giving him and allowing him to get everything he wants. Take the hedge from around him and I'll make him cut you to your face. Yeah. What did God tell him? He said, go ahead. Say, now, listen, devil, let me tell you what now. You can go ahead and do whatever you want to him, but you can't touch his soul. You can't kill him. I ain't going to let you do that. And the devil said, that's all I want. Wow. Went to him. Job, we know the story, lost everything. All the cattle, all of the sheep. Children got killed in the storm. And the messenger came and told uh, 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 Job about it. And, and, and Job just simply shook his head and said, the Lord gives. And the Lord take it away. Bless it. In the name of the Lord. And sometimes that's what we have to say. Praise of God, amen, at all times, in the good time, in the bad time. Praise him when you have something. Praise him when you don't have something. Praise him when you're happy. Praise him when you're sad. Praise him when you're sick.
days and weep and wail. They bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. And then the psalmist listen to what he said. He says, I will never stop praising God. He says, his praises will continually be in my mouth. Ain't that something? Ain't that a testimony? In other words, children, don't let nothing and nobody, I had to add to nobody in that realm, because there are some folk who will make you so mad that you stop praising God. Oh, you ought to hear me, somebody. Amen. 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 There are some things that, that can call a person not to praise God. Is that right? But he says, he says, he says, he says, his I will praise him, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Every Christian ought to have something to praise God for. Amen. Huh? And when you tell other folk about what you're praising God for, do you know it helps them in their faith walk with God? Amen? Yeah, yeah. Tell somebody. I remember, you know, I always tell the story, and I remember it well, where the man shouted in church about Ralph, and, you know, it disturbed some people, and so they went out to his house to kind of talk to him, and, you know, say, listen, you're kind of keeping up a lot of, I mean, use the word, grandmother would use a lot of racket. It's been a while since y'all heard that word. <laughs> See, Grandma used to holler in the back, boy, cut all that racket out. And, 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 and they said, um, and we just want to know if you were kind of, you know, kind of quieting it down just a little bit. Huh? Oh, this brother, hey, man, he was hot on it. Hey, man, he walked the benches and holler. Everybody quiet in church. He just started hollering, thank you! Hallelujah! And you know, you know how we look at folk who do that. Ooh, we some wrong man. <laughs> but we never say and wonder why he's doing that. You see, when the Lord is done, oh, help me somebody. <laughs> and so they went out and talked with him, and then he said to them, as they were talking, he was plowing out in the back. Yeah. And they told him, saying, we just want to know if you can kind of keep it down a little bit. And he says, do y'all see the two-story house over there? Yeah. They said, yeah. Do you see the two Mercedes Benz in the garage? Do you see this 150 acres that you're on? The Lord blessed me with that. To hold these rings while I shout. <laughs> the Lord, when the Lord has been good to you, you've got something to praise him for. You have something to shout about because God has been mighty, mighty good to you. Amen. Amen. So, his praises shall continually to be in my mouth. And then this is what he said. He says, in the third thing, he says, I will praise him for what he has done. Now, has done mean in the past. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. And see, I like that about David. Amen. Because sometimes some folk, they just... All in the phrase in the gimme, Lord, give me this, give me that, help me with this, do this, you know, give me. But you got to start thinking about what God has done for you. Is that right? And when you start praising God for what He has done for you in the past, you'll forget about what's going on in the present. Now we got a witness here. Right. Amen. See, in the past, God has been good, isn't that right? He blessed us with the blessings that we should in need of. Is that right? He put food on the table. He healed our bodies when we were sick. God has done some things in the past. He has brought us as a people from a mighty long way out of the cotton fields into the White House. That's a mighty long way, isn't it? From the back of the bus to now driving the bus. We own the bus company. God has brought us from a mighty long way. And if he did it then, he'll do it again. And then the psalmist says, listen, after making a vow to the Lord, then he makes an invitation. He said, may all who are oppressed, 
Y'all know what a press is, huh? You're depressed. How do you know, Pastor, when you're depressed? You can't hardly get up in the morning. You don't want to get up in the morning. You don't want to do anything. You're moping and you're dragging. Is that right? You depressed. Now, some folks, they got it all divided up. These psychiatrists, they say, some of them are severely depressed. Some of them are mildly depressed. Some of them are lightly depressed. But all of them are depressions. Isn't that right? And the antidote for depression is through praise and magnification of the Lord. Do you know you can praise your way out of depression? Yeah. If you don't believe me, I want you to try it sometime. Amen. Amen. When you're depressed or down about something, I just want you to just start saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you for whatever that's depressing you. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to bless your name. I'm going to lift you on high. Just, just start thanking God and then remembering the things that he did for you in the past. Lord, you blessed me in the past. You know, and you will forget about the depression that you're in and before you know it, you're jumping up and down, shouting hallelujah and praising God's name. Sometimes we have to overlook what we're going through to see where God wants us to be. And then finally, he invites them, he says, now, some of y'all who don't believe this, because you had some non-believers back there. Most folk today, they believe it. <laughs> he said, some of y'all who don't believe this, taste the Lord and see that he's good. In other words, you ought to try God for yourself. Huh? Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Amen. Now, there's a candy bar that I love. It's good. It's called Mr. Good Bar. You may not have heard that. Man, it's chocolate. It's good, crunchy, you know what I mean? You put it in your mouth, it just melts in your mouth. Oh, man, it just feels good to your tummy. I tell you, it, it is so good. I mean, it just give you a tingling feeling. Amen. This is Mr. Good Bar. Chocolate, crunchy, just goes down easy. Now, I can tell you about Mr. Good Boy until I turn blue in the face. But if you don't never get a Mr. Good Boy and eat it for yourself, you will never know what I'm talking about. You have to try God for yourself. Taste the Lord. Woo! You will find out that God is good. How many know God is good? How many know he's good every time? He's good. He's finger licking good. He's better than Tony the Tiger. He's better than King Solomon. He's better than Coca Cola. He's better than Ruby. He's very good. God, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall what? Continually be in my little Lord a big round of applause this morning. Come on, let's give the Lord a big round.